This week's best MMA bets, we're talking UFC 295. I'm going to give you guys my lock of the week, my most confident picks, favorite underdogs. We'll talk props slash value bets and then finish it out with the parlays. So make sure you guys smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn the post notifications on and make sure to share the video as well. Guys, last week, the lock win streak did come to an end. It was very unfortunate because Renat Fakhradinov had a draw with Elizio Zaleski in a fight that he was up the first two rounds. The third round, he got beat up, dropped with a body shot, a body kick to be more specific, beaten on from top. And I see how it could have been a 10-8 round. I'm not going to sit here and argue with that decision, even though I personally thought 29-28, but he finished horribly being Fakhradinov, so I see why it could go 10-8 and become a draw. So that is still a 10-week unbeaten streak because nonetheless, there was not a loss last week. So it's not as pretty as a 10-week win streak, which would have been optimal, but still unbeaten. The lock has not lost in 10 weeks straight. Now we're heading in to week 11, looking for an 11-week unbeaten streak and to get back on the winning track. So without further ado, the lock of the week. Sergey Pavlovich and new interim UFC heavyweight champion. I think he's going to knock Tom Aspinall out. I feel as though Pavlovich boxing is going to be a major factor in this fight. Note that he brings within this fight a six inch reach advantage, serious punching power on the feet, a wrestling base that many seem to overlook because of one loss early in his UFC run. It was his debut against Alistair Overeem, where he was put on his back with a clinch trip and beaten up from top position. I have seen his improvements since then and obviously stopping Curtis Blades' takedowns with relative ease and then brutally knocking him out is a positive takeaway. I think Tom Aspinall is a really good athlete, a dangerous prospect, and it's a hard fight. Dangerous contender, I should say. Prospect is an understatement for him. When I look at this matchup, I see Pavlovich getting the nod and I have to call him lock of the week. I think we're getting a first round knockout. Now the odds for this fight. Pavlovich is the underdog, plus 100, so I'm going dog lock this week. KO for Pavlovich sits at plus 115. Now, I do want to look at the first round knockout prop just out of, you know, straight curiosity because the official call, I am going to say it's an early knockout. I think Pavlovich is going to sting Aspinall on the feet, plus 215 first round KO. I like the straight money line side. I like the knockout prop. I do think this fight is probably going under that two and a half round mark. That's crazy wide at minus 550. Under one and a half, minus 215. I think we're going under one and a half as well. I have Sergei Pavlovich getting a knockout. I see his striking as superior to Tom Aspinall's. In the Tibura fight, when Aspinall blitzed him, you did see him coming in straight forward with the chin slightly up. He's there to be hit, and I'm telling you guys, Sergei Pavlovich is going to hammer him and knock him out in the first round and become the interim heavyweight champion and arguably the scariest heavyweight in the UFC, you know, aside from maybe him and John Jones being the top two. And I'd hope that the winner of Miocic Jones would eventually fight Sergei Pavlovich to really cement a true undisputed champ. And it very well might be new generation Pavlovich getting the belt here, the interim belt, and then winning the world title later in 2024 against potentially John Jones. Pavlovich is my lock this week. I see him getting a KO in the first round. I'm damn excited for this co-main event. And I love this lock of the week. We're bringing it back to victory territory. We're going to make it an 11 week unbeaten streak and 10 0 and one in the last 11 So let's go Pavlovich, lock of the week. Next section I want to jump to, I want to talk my most confident picks on the card, specifically the favorites here. I'll bring four of them up on screen. We'll go through each one of them, and then, you know, I'll get more specific, but we'll quickly breeze over them. So we have Jared Gordon, Jamal Emmers, Steve Urseg, and John Castaneda. First with Gordon, he is a minus 185 favorite against Mark Madsen, who I think has tremendous Greco-Roman wrestling skills, 
but isn't extremely good at MMA, and that's kind of due to the late start. His wrestling can keep it in, keep him in it against certain opponents, but you saw him get absolutely destroyed by Grant Dawson. I think that Gordon's boxing is better. I think that his clinch work is competitive with Mark Madsen, and I think Gordon's going to get the win. Now, Gordon is not notoriously known for power. He is not much of a finisher with only two knockouts on the record. But I'll tell you guys this. He could hurt Madsen in this fight. Nonetheless, I think it's going distance. Decision is plus 125 with an over 2.5 at minus 280. My favorite out of everything that I've listed off of the odds in this fight would be the straight money line. I think Jared Gordon is the better fist fighter than Mark Madsen, and I see him winning. Next one, we got Jamal Emmers. He's taking on the gutsy, tough, and young Dennis Bazooka. And I think Jamal Emmer's length, his kickboxing abilities, and takedown defense are going to lead him to a unanimous decision win. Little bit wide at minus 260, but still a confident call on my end. Decision sits at minus 120, and then the side of over 2.5 is minus 225. I think there is a high chance this fight goes long. I think there is a high chance it's Jamal Emmer's outpointing Dennis Bazooka over the three rounds and getting a decision win. I like Jamal Emmer's a lot. And then Steve Urseg is minus 195, the favorite over short notice replacement, Alessandro Costa, whose style is interesting. I like his pressure. I think he has punching power, good grappling, and he's jacked. He's dealing with Urseg, who I think has better movement than him, better striker from distance, and I think is going to be able to outwork Costa. He's also more accurate with the hands. Costa will throw more looping punches, where I do think Urseg is going to go more towards straight, calculated, and accurate shots. So I like Steve Urseg's chances at minus 195 a ton. Over two and a half there is minus 145. I expect it to go long, and I have Urseg officially by decision sitting at plus 140. Now, the final of the most confident pick section is John Castaneda, who's minus 140, winning a decision at plus 155. I just think he's better than Kyung Ho Kong. I guess I'm not overly sold on Kong going to be able to deal with someone with the grappling pressure and just overall fighting pressure that Castaneda brings. I feel as though if Castaneda fights to his potential making this a dirty fight, not just kickboxing on the outside, but nasty clinch pressure, dirty boxing on the inside, mixing in takedowns. I see him outworking Kong and winning a decision. Plus 155 for that decision line with the side of Castaneda getting it done. I got to be honest, man. I'm excited for the most confident pick section this week. I would say Castaneda would be my least of the most confident pick. On this one, but it still made the slate of the top four. And I know people in the comments might say, yo, but what about Mateus Rebecca? Why is he not there over Roosevelt Roberts? Well, I'm a little bit concerned about just crazy wide odds with Roosevelt Roberts, who was my pick to win the ultimate fighter, even though he didn't accomplish that. I still think the guy has good MMA potential and he's so long and tall with a big edge over Rebecca. I didn't feel as though I wanted to bring Rebecca in that most confident pick section. Even if I'm going the way of the Rebecca pick, to me, I feel as though minus 650 is not justified. And Roberts plus 475 with that length advantage could be a live dog on very short notice. So I didn't want to put him in the most confident pick section for those wondering. I know people were curious. My thoughts in the Rebecca fight, I'll be breaking it down tomorrow, Thursday on the Late Night Live in depth, the normal breakdown. So make sure you guys tune into that Late Night Live Thursday night. Let's jump to my favorite underdogs on the card. We got four of them. We got Matt Frivola. We have Tabitha Ritchie. We have Vyshislav Barshev, a.k.a. Slava Claus. And we have Kevin Borjas. Frivola is going to be the first one that I bring up. Plus 185 for Frivola to win and a KO at plus 315. I see him putting Benoit Saint-Denis unconscious here. Saint-Denis comes in range a little bit stiff. Yes, he has good wrestling. Yes, he has good pressure. Yes, he has a good chin. But when you come in a bit stiff against a heavy-handed guy like Matt Frivola who chinned Drew Dober, how am I supposed to look past that? Frivola throws damaging shots all the time. He loops his shots well. He finds chins well. Benoit being a southpaw, I could see getting caught with a straight coming in. And the power of Favola is a big difference maker here. So I'm going with the underdog 
Frivola at plus 185 to knock out Benoit Saint-Denis. And I don't think you're crazy for sprinkling that knockout prop alongside of playing the plus 185 money line at plus 315 because I expect Frivola to win this fight by knockout. Love that underdog. Next one, Tabitha Ritchie. She's plus 150 as a dog. I recognize that her and Lupita Godinez is a super competitive fight. And I'd even go as far as to say it's a bit of a coin flip fight. Obviously, she's an underdog pick and she's still making it here in the underdog session. But proceed with a little bit of caution because I recognize Lupita Godinez has a very good skill set too. And they're two legit on the come up female fighters that are close to contendership with wins here. So I'm going to lean Richie, competitive decision. I really think we're going over two and a half. Minus 400 over two and a half. High confidence. Vyacheslav Barshev, plus 100. His KO is plus 250. I don't believe Nazim Sadikov has that much of a dangerous grappling style that he's going to completely smash Vyacheslav Barshev. Look at his recent loss. Mike Davis, very good fighter. Mark Jacasey, very good grinder. You look at the side of Nazim Sadikov. He's getting beat by Evan Elder. He wins it by a doctor stoppage. He's getting destroyed by Terrence McKinney in the first round. McKinney obviously ran out of gas in the second, got strangled. It was a beautiful rear naked. But he grabbed the cage, a blatant cage grab, which led to that fight ending. Vyacheslav Barshev is the crisper striker. He has the better boxing. He has an on-point jab. He has nasty body shots that he rips. I think that Vyacheslav Barshev is a great underdog here. I think he's going to end up chinning the side of Nazim Sadikov at plus 250. KO, very live. Barshev a team alpha male fighter, so you have to consistently expect wrestling improvements, and I expect that to be on display here. And then the final of the dog section is Kevin Borjas. Okay, he's fighting Josh Van. Minus 220, Josh Van. Plus 185, Borjas. I don't think Van should be a big favorite in this fight. I think it should be more of a pick'ems. Kevin Borjas is coming off of a win on Contender Series as a big underdog over Victor Diaz. I picked him as a dog there. I feel like he can win as a dog here with Joshua Van in a pretty damn good striking affair. Now, I'm not crazy about a prop bet in this one because I could see damaging shots landing on either side, but I'm picking the side of Borjas to out-dog him and potentially get a hard-fought decision over the three rounds. So Borjas is plus 185 to win on the straight money line side. That's really where I would lean it. I wouldn't want to risk it throwing it all down on win by decision for Borjas, but to read it off, it's plus 400 decision with Borjas by KO at plus 300. I just like the money line. I think he's a live money line, straight onslaught underdog. Those are my favorite underdogs on the card. And it's time now to jump to the props slash value bet section. So if we're talking prop slash value bets, I think potentially touching an Alex Pereira money line, not crazy, nor is Alex Pereira with a straight knockout here, plus 100. And I think that this fight is going to end in violence, probably that under two and a half at minus 175. Under one and a half at plus 115 is riskier because I can see these guys getting into the later stages of the second. And even like it could go early third. That's why I like under two and a half. I do think Pereira is going to find the chin in the second round potentially and knock out the side of Yiri Prohashka. I expect the lead hook to be a big difference maker, catching Prohashka coming in like a madman. So I like Pereira a lot to win and obviously by KO. And then on the side of Mackenzie Dern, her to win by submission, sitting at plus 150. Andraj has seemed to lost her flow. Her mojo is gone. She's lost a step. Plus 150 by sub. I expect Dern to get the back and strangler. I don't think Andraj has the same level of intensity she once had. Let's not forget, she had moved up to 125 pounds and she wasn't cutting that weight to get to 115. Now she's on a three-fight losing streak. And I think Dern is on the come up looking better consistently after destroying Angela Hill. So... I like Dern to win in that one by submission. Those are the props slash value bets that I felt, you know, like including in this one, man. Like, I feel like it just makes sense. Those two right there. K.O. Pereira, sub Dern, a little something extra, maybe a money line, Poetom Pereira. 
I do want to quickly mention this one, which is an interesting play, but not my favorite. Plus 110 for the over two and a half in the Sabatini Lopez fight. I recognize the danger on both sides of money line attacks. I'm picking Sabatini on a very competitive decision. Plus 110 for an over two and a half in a fight that I do think goes long makes a lot of sense to me. Just had to mention it because it's at the plus money. But those are the prop slash value bets. I do want to jump to the par lay section let's parlay some things up here all right let's parlay some things up properly i have the first parlay already written down i know what i'm going with but uh, i'm looking for the names to pop up here all right there is jared gordon let's ride with him i think jared gordon has a good chance of winning i think this fight has a good chance of going long so over two and a half and Jared Gordon now brings me to minus 107. If you went with my underdog lock of Sergey Pavlovich, now you have plus 287 for something that I feel is really live. Steve Ursag added to it, plus 491. Then you add the side of Castaneda. Now you're at plus 929. You add in Emmers, you're at plus 1341. And then if you add in a little more steam and you're like, listen, I'm going with your big dog. I'm going with Frivola. Now we got plus 4,151. I think this is like an absolute madman play. But it brings a nice combination of a confident over-under and then mixing with some high-confidence money line predictions with two live underdogs. Two very good underdogs, I believe, on this card. Two savage dogs that I think can come out biting. Now, just a, a Castaneda play with the side of uh, Jared Gordon, plus 170. Just those two together. If you want to just attack straight fighter plays, I think that's good. I think that Ursaig has a good chance, plus 312. And then adding in the side of Jamal. Those four together, four favorites, plus 476. I got a good feeling about those ones coming through as well. I think there's a real chance for just like high confidence calls. Plus 620, no underdog on it. Then you add Pavlovich. Now we got plus 1341. But, you know, then we're getting into more high-risk territory. I'm trying to give you guys some alternate attacks. If you just wanted to go prelim only, Emmer's Castaneda plus 144. You want to just go dog, Pavlovich, and the side of Frivola plus 490. And then even just the over two and a half here. Now you're at plus 638. I think there's a great chance that it hits. Plus 1,000 right when you add Ursag in. There's definitely some interesting ways to play it. I want to kind of go balls territory on the next one, though. Let's go Poetan. Let's go Pavlovich. Let's have some steam on this main card. Let's go Frivola for a straight main card savagery of plus 1,003 for Pereira, Pavlovich, and Frivola. Then you add in Jared Gordon at plus 1,609. I think there's a good chance of that with Ursag now, plus 2,509 when we keep adding extensions. And then the loopy over on your slate, we got plus 3,161. That's balls and a half. That's a big balls play. Yeah, I think there's a real chance that it happens, man. I think there's a real chance for a lot of these underdogs too. Like you're not crazy for looking to attack the side on a parlay of Vyacheslav Barshev. You wouldn't be nuts to throw him in a straight trifecta dog onslaught of uh, the side of Pavlovich, Vyacheslav Barshev, and Frivola for all underdogs plus 1139. I believe that could be live. Obviously, proceed with caution on a straight underdog attack. Jamal Emmers and the side of Jared Gordon, plus 117. We're getting plus money just for that. And then we add in the over there, plus 171. Add in Ursaig, look at that, plus 314. We're kind of going over the same ones again. But you guys know where my head's at. The high confidence picks, my favorite underdogs, a little bit of over-under action on your lineup. I think there's some good ways to mix and match it, man. I think that we have some good attacks, like trying to think do we go with just an emmers over even the over in the emmers fight the over in the loopy fight let's just go pure over under action we got minus 124 and then i'm like all right let me add in jared gordon he's got a good chance plus 180 for that trifecta that makes sense to me too that makes sense to me too i like a few of these mix and match parlays 
But I feel as though the two over-unders, the overs specifically, I like there a lot. And then towards the side of the dogs, you guys know where my head's at. With your parlays, you can go wild, man, or you can go cautious. Depends how much you're throwing down. Nonetheless, make sure you guys bet intelligently. Don't bet more than you can afford to lose. Play this game on the more conservative side. In the long run, I think you're better off. Now, granted, if you're real confident on something, you want to attack with that savage mode, give it a whirl. I appreciate all of you watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Best MMA Bets. Make sure you guys smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn the post notifications on and make sure to share the video too. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I want to hear the people's lock of the week. And if you got nothing to say in those comments, but you just enjoy the content, as always, drop a W in the chat to boost the algorithm for your boy. I got love for each and every one of you. I appreciate you guys tuning into the show. Looking forward to Late Night Live tomorrow. So make sure you guys tune into that. I'll see you every day this week because the daily content doesn't stop on the channel. So if you don't got the post notifications turned on, turn them on. Don't just leave them on personalized. Put them on all so you don't miss a video. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace, everybody.